Simple linear regression is a method to model the relationship between two variables, like height and weight. In this figure, we see weight on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. The black dots then represent measurements of 30 different individuals. For example, this person weighs 76 kilos and is 173 centimeters. A simple linear model is defined by two parameters, the intercept, which is where the line should start, and the slope, which is the direction of the line. In this example, the slope is positive, so taller people are on average heavier. For each value of the explanatory variable, we then have a predicted value of the outcome. You can see that these predictions are not perfect. The observations do not fall exactly on the line. This remainder, this difference between the actual outcome and that predicted by the model, is called the residual. The way the intercept and slope are estimated is by minimizing the residuals, or more precisely, by minimizing the sum of squared residuals, called ordinary least squares. We use squaring for a number of reasons, but most importantly, it's just easier to work with. In this example, the line goes up with a slope of about 0.5, meaning that on average, individuals who weigh one kilo more are about half a centimeter taller. The example also shows some limitations of regression models. For instance, if I start eating more and gain 10 kilos, I should not expect to gain 5 centimeters in height, even though that is what the line suggests. So this relationship we estimated is not causal, but rather just a correlation or association. If you wanted to estimate a causal relationship, you'd have to set up your study to be interventional where you randomly assign individuals to different treatments or an appropriate control group before determining the effect on the outcome, which you can then attribute to your intervention, the treatment. But this is just observational data, so all we have is a correlation. Also, a linear relationship may be a reasonable approximation within the range of these data, but this line doesn't stop anywhere. And while 140 is short, People of that height probably don't weigh 16 kilos on average. Nor do people below a certain height have negative weight. So be careful when using linear regression that you can't just extrapolate beyond the range of your data, because you have no guarantee the linear relationship holds there. In fact, you have no guarantee the relationship even holds within the range of your data. We can fit lines to everything. That doesn't mean there is a linear relationship, but you'll still get an intercept and a slope. So in actual analysis, if you wanted to make any statements about this relationship, you would first have to perform diagnostics to see whether the assumptions implied by the model, like linearity, are in fact reasonable. Finally, also keep in mind that these are just 30 individuals, not the whole population. So there is uncertainty in this line. We can express that uncertainty in the form of a confidence interval, which shows us a range of plausible starting points and directions for the line, to represent the uncertainty we have about their estimates. The precise definition of confidence intervals is a little bit tricky, which is why I've made a separate video about it. While a confidence interval is useful to say something about the line, about the relationship we just estimated, it still does not tell us much about where to expect the actual observations. Clearly, most of them fall outside the confidence interval. If you want to predict future observations, you need something else, called a prediction interval, which shows you where you would expect a certain percentage of future observations based on this model. A prediction interval is always wider than a confidence interval because it includes both the variance between individuals and the uncertainty in the estimated relationship. To summarize, a simple linear model estimates an intercept and a slope based on the residuals. We can express the uncertainty of these estimates with a confidence interval, and we can predict new observations with a prediction interval. In the description, you can find example codes in R and in Python. In the next video, we'll go over the underlying assumptions of the model, which are required for drawing valid conclusions.